Health Life on repeat. I am here to talk to you about migraines, migraines, and more migraines. I am glad you are here to join me in this episode. I am going to be talking about migraines, 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 but mostly the three T's. I call them the three T's. One, tracking, two, triggers, and three, types. Do you have more than one type of migraine? I sure do. I have oh, five or six. It's crazy. But let's jump into what I do when I all of a sudden have a new migraine. I have an app on my phone called Migraine Buddy app. It is perfect. I love it. I've never tried any other app, so you, I can't compare it to something else. But in it, it is preset with information and you can add to the presets. So you can add your personal medicines, your personal things you do that brings you relief, your personal things that bring you triggers. You can add it and customize it. But the best thing, the best thing of all about it is it's there, like I can go back three years from now in front of my doctor and I can say, well, seems to be every March, I have 22 migraines. Maybe it has something to do with the weather in March or, you know, there is ways to use the statistic, the statistics. That's the word. There's ways to use that information for more than just you sitting there tracking your migraine. Your doctors can use it. You can create an overview of seeing things and it's so convenient. Now you can write it in a book. You can write it and if that's your thing, you, you do your thing. But I find when I have a migraine start, my brain is already going tweet, 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 and it's it's not quite there. And when I go and I'm at that level of pain that is so bad and I just pop a new pill or two or three new pills, I all I have to do is hit a button. I don't have to find a pencil. I don't have to write legibly. I, it's there. And there's a note section where you can just type manually anything you want. You could say, you know, mother-in-law came to visit, stress ramped up right away. As soon as we started talking about finances, the migraine hit. And you begin to see a pattern that might be one of your stressful triggers. So that is something I highly recommend. Tracking your migraines. Number two, there are triggers. Do you know your triggers? Do you? Do you know them all or some? Maybe there are some that you haven't figured out are your triggers yet, but when you use an app like that, you can begin to see patterns. Oh, every time I do my finances, I end up with a migraine. Every time I watch a late night movie without my special glasses on, I get a migraine. So you begin to see patterns. So learn your triggers. I know that my number one trigger that I can't do a darn thing about is the barometric pressure. It will affect me when it drops below a 30 PS something or another. And if it swings really high up really fast, yeah, that'll affect me too. And if there's storms and snow and you, you know, weather and pressure, you can't do much about it. The second most powerful trigger I have is fluorescent lightings but I can control how many stores I go into or offices or businesses that have fluorescent lighting. And I can also put on preventive glasses that will limit the amount of fluorescence that's soaking into my pupils. Whether it soaks into my skin, I haven't ran that test yet to see. I often will even put uh, long sleeves on or jackets going into the stores with my glasses on because I feel and I sense that it seeps in through my skin. If you're a scientist out there and you know whether fluorescent lighting, the rays, if it soaks into your skin, I would love to know. Moving on, the next trigger that is big for me is stress. So if it's a good stress, like yahoo, we're going on vacation, uh, that'll cause a migraine. If it's bad stress, like I'm crying, you know, someone is uh, I love is hurting, those are stressors know your triggers. It might be a food you eat. It might be a tree in your yard or a certain location you go to that has certain strong smells that trigger your 
types of migraine. So track your migraines some way, somehow. Know your triggers. Yes, indeed. And thirdly, do you get more than one kind of migraine? Is that even possible? I'm here to tell you. It is certainly 100% possible. Huh. Lack of hydration, one of my triggers for migraines. Now, I, have, I haven't sat down and memorized how many types of migraines I get. I'll just spew them off as fast as I can so it won't take up time. Hemiplegic migraines, migraines with aura, migraines without aura, uh, occipital migraines, cluster headaches, um, vestibular migraines. I also get Alice in Wonderland syndrome. Um, ba -da 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 -ba -da -ba -da. There might be there might be something else I'm missing, but right there we're looking at eight different kinds of migraines. So I know my body well enough to know certain things happen for certain migraines. So that's where if you haven't fine tuned your list and understanding what you, what you, kind of migraine you have, you may need different medicines for different types of migraine. Now I have at the present four abortives. Abortive is a pill that you take the moment you get your auras or the head pain starts. Some people don't get auras, but I bet most of us do get them. You're just not aware that some of those things you're experiencing are auras. Deja vu, that feeling. Maybe you hear things so far away that no one hears, but that they're not really there, but yet they're there. Maybe you smell something like I smell radiator fluid when I'm in my house. Mm -hmm. That's not normal. Maybe you see your vision goes down into a tunnel. Maybe you get a little bit of a flicker. You get the sharp, bright colored triangles that go like that. I was looking at my husband the other day and said, I, I can only see half of you. And he said, what? I said, no matter where I look at you, if I focus on your, your nose, I only see half of you. If I focus on your shoulder, I only see half of you, no matter if I have one eye open, the other eye open, or both open. And then, um, it, you know, that is a visual aura. Now, I don't get uh, visual auras with all my migraines. I get them with certain types of migraines. And I have to know that as soon as I get a visual aura, as soon as I get the smell aura, as soon as I begin to hear those things or have constant deja vu or the Alice in Wonder syndrome, all of a sudden the ground is higher, I am smaller, the world is kind of caving in on me, that is when I need to take my abortive. But like I said, I have four different types of abortives. Now when I am having, uh, well my doctor didn't want me to take uh, some of them every migraine that I had. So that's why we have a variety of them. So talk to your doctor, see what they have in store for you, and um, ask if there is a couple of varieties you can try. You may be able to take triptans. I cannot. I have a stroke risk and I also have hemiplegic migraine, which puts me just a wee bit higher in the stroke category. And when I have tried them, because I tried them before we were diagnosed with hemiplegic migraine. Um, they triggered the Alice in Wonder syndrome and the hemiplegic migraine syndromes went into overdrive. So triptans are a no-no for me. My medical alert bracelet that goes on my watch, it says no triptans and no Benadryl. So know what kind of migraine you're having is very important. Now, uh, I only get left-sided pain in my brain for my hemiplegic migraines and my migraines with auras. So uh, how do I know what it is, which one it is? Well, my hemiplegic migraine will always start with a body part that, you know, for me, the left side is dominant. 
For you, it might be right side if you have hemiplegic migraines. Some rare people get it on both, and I am so sorry that you have to deal with that. But for me, my left foot, the arch of my foot, the nerves in the foot, they hurt. And then it goes up behind my knee, and then it goes up my thigh, and it's like um, someone is pulling my muscles, and then it all tingles all the way up. And it, if it goes up the arm, when it gets to about right here, I know that by the time it continues up to my neck, I am incapacitated, not able to speak, not able to get my thoughts out. I can hear the world just fine, but I can't answer you. And so if the, the side will either go very weak or it will go paralyzed. Why? You just lay there and till it passes. But for those migraines, I take Midrin. I know that will be the only thing that breaks the migraine that is hemiplegic. I've tried the Fioracet. It does not break a hemiplegic migraine. I've tried the Ubrevli. It does not break a hemiplegic migraine. I've tried, what is the other one I have? I can't remember. But that is what I do. I have to take the Midrin, which has to be formulated at a compounding pharmacy with your doctors calling in the three main ingredients because the FDA will no longer allow Midrin to be sold on the market because they don't want to put the money into testing it again so that it can be marketed again. It's a very old drug. But, you know, everyone's always moving forward and faster and got to get better. They don't want to go backwards in time. So they're not putting money into getting it federally um, approved again as sold as Midrin. But the three main ingredients in it, your doctor can call in to a compounding pharmacy and say, can you create a tablet with these three things in and the compounding pharmacy knows exactly what proportions to mix together to wait to make voila the pill any of my left sided migraine pain so it also helps the migraine with aura where the pain hits the left side I grab Midrin for my left side when I get a migraine that is occipital in nature that goes um, this way and up I'm going for the Fiora set I have tried the uh, Ubrevli three times I've tried it. I've gotten very nauseous and the third time I vomited violently. So I don't know if the vomiting was part of the migraine or if it was part of the reaction to this. So I haven't got my nerve up to try it a fourth time, but one day I will. That is key for me. Know what kind of migraine I'm having to know what pill to take. The migraine starts in my stomach and it's nausea is all I feel. It is definitely the nausea that comes preceding my migraine. And that is an aura or it's a complete stomach migraine where I never get the pain, but that's rare. It usually goes stomach, vision aura, head pain, and then if you're not if you're not in tune to your body at that point, you are at the pain level that nothing's gonna help. So take your nausea pills. If you don't have a nausea pill, talk to your doctor. I have three different things. I have an Odonzotron, which is uh, I think also called Zolfran. It works when, within seven minutes, literally seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm still just as nauseous. I go in for one of these. And these, I interchange one or the other. One makes me more tired. So if I was out and about trying to do functioning things with my husband, I wouldn't choose that one. I would choose the other one. Then in about three hours, if I am still nauseous, I have to add another um, level of help along the way. Uh, but if the migraine has not stopped, it has hit. I have the vision. I quick run and go get my tablet. That will either trigger the migraine pain in the head to never show up or it's going to be a doozy and the pain shows up. And that's when I add in an additional pain medicine. For me, it's Ketorolac. It's a little bit stronger than um, 
than the Advils and anti-inflammatories, and it will help me go to sleep a little bit better. So, you know, know your migraine types. Know what kind of medicines you need to compile and have ready to go. My uh, neurologist shared with me at the beginning of this journey, he's like, <clears throat> This is what you need to do immediately when you get the aura. And then the next step. And when that doesn't work, you have off in a cup these three things ready to go because they're going to be what knock you out into sleep. And if you get sleepy enough uh, and get into sleep, it, it somehow settles the brain firings. That's going to do He's like, take those, jump in bed with your eyes back and just do your best to get through it. So, know your triggers, track your triggering and your migraines, and have a variety of medicines on hand. If you don't have options, ask your doctor for a backup option. Ask for a non-triptan. There's the Fioracets, the Nurtec, the Ubrevli. There's injectable shots. There's a lot of stuff. There's a nasal spray that you can take. There are new things every day on the market. There is now an, an IV you can take preventatively. There are options out there. Try your best to have an arsenal on hand. I know this was a lot of information. I know I threw it at you pretty fast, but I hope the comp that you understand what I'm trying to say is that uh, knowing your body is the best defense against a migraine. Knowing that you have options, um, you know, if, you're, if your only option is Advil and Excedrin or Tylenol, then maybe you need to talk with your physicians and say, what is the, the next level up? What's the second level up? What else can I take? Because we cannot keep affording to go to the ER room to have them give you an IV of a heavy dosing Ketorolac plus a nausea pill all in an IV so you fall asleep for four hours on the table and then they charge you a couple bazillion thousands of dollars. We can't keep doing that, folks. We got to have our arsenal at home. So there are options out there. So see what you can do with your doctor. Gather up your resources and have a nice conversation with your neurologist. I wish you the best. I wish you didn't have migraines, but know you're not alone. And we are here with you. I'm here with you. I'm fighting with you. And I'll share any information that I gain. I wish you wellness and I wish you peace. And above all, I wish that you had no migraines whatsoever. Until we talk again, bye-bye.